Shalom to all the listeners. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Monday and I would like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. If you're listening to the broadcast through the radio or if you're receiving them via WhatsApp, please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kanguka website, kanguka.com, or by visiting the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or by downloading the Kanguka mobile app on your phone. Just type Kanguka. That's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. This morning, I would like to send my warm greetings to all the listeners and I would like to thank all the people who pray for us. May I am bless every person who prays for us. As I keep reminding you, when you pray for the Kanguka team, you should also remember to pray for the partners of Kanguka who provide financial support to this ministry so it can continue to grow. May all the glory be to I am. As a reminder, I often use the name I am in this broadcast because it's the name of God revealed by God himself. You can read about it in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. As usual on Mondays, I like to remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day. And the third is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today, I'm going to talk about the second principle which is to pray every day. I know that many of you who are listening to me pray in one way or another, but it's not easy to pray every day. It takes a lot of discipline to do it. You must push yourself. You must make a sacrifice. In order to be able to pray every day, you must first have a revelation about why you need to pray every day. You need to understand that you should be near to I am. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the armor of God that every Christian should put on. Paul listed many components of that armor. And after he spoke about by the sword of the spirit or the sword of God in verse 17. In verse 18, he concluded by saying that we need to pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And he added that we need to be watchful to this end with all perseverance. It means that we need to persevere in prayer. We need to keep doing it. You need to know that every time you are about to pray, there will always be something that wants to prevent you from praying. I don't know if you've realized that when you make a commitment to pray every day, you may do it for a few days, but there will always be something that comes up and it will prevent you from continuing to pray. Sometimes you wake up and you don't feel like praying. Sometimes you hear news that prevents you from praying. But if you've already made up your mind that you must pray, nothing can stop you. That's why Paul said that we need to have a zeal for prayer and we must persevere in prayer. It means that whether you feel like praying, Praying or not, you must pray because you know that prayer is life. Ever since I started this broadcast, I've been telling you that prayer is life. I am who I am today because of prayer. I am alive because of prayer. There are many things that can come against you in your journey to heaven, but you will find victory through prayer. When you are praying, the angels of I am fight for you. You don't see them, but they are fighting on your behalf. Many people don't pray every day. They only pray from time to time because they don't understand what happens when they pray. If God were to open your eyes and show you what he does when you pray, you will never again skip prayer. Even if you are physically weak, you will still pray because you know that there is power in prayer. Prayer attracts the power of God and you can see his hand in action. Prayer opens the doors that are closed, but it's not just any prayer. Your prayer must be filled with thanksgiving and adoration to God and it must not include any words of complaining otherwise your prayer won't have any value. So you need to pray all the time. Verse 18 says that you need to always pray all kinds of prayer. There are prayers of adoration. There are prayers to take authority over demons. There are prayers of praise to God. There are prayers of supplication. But no matter what time of prayer you're praying, you must pray in in the name of Jesus. You need to pray in the name of Jesus and you need to do it every day. You must persevere. Don't wait until you have a problem in order to start praying. You must pray every day whether you have a problem or not. Some people only pray when they have a problem. When they don't have any problem, they stop praying. But if you are a spiritually awakened person, you should pray at all times. Whether you have a problem or not, you should always pray. Don't wait until you have a problem in order to start praying. 
praying. Sometimes God can allow problems in your life so you can pray, but you need to grow spiritually. You need to get to a point where you always pray whether you feel like praying or not. Now time to continue our study of the books of Samuel which started on June 30. We have already covered many topics and last week I had asked you to read chapter 15. I quickly went over chapter 12, 13 and 14 but there are many important lessons we need to learn from chapter 15. There are many lessons in this chapter which are very relevant to us today in the new covenant. This chapter talks about King Saul. It was so area that he had made a very bad mistake when he decided to offer a sacrifice even though he wasn't a priest. Because of this, someone told him that his reign was going to be cut short. He also told him that God had already chosen a man after his own heart. He was talking about David. So let's start chapter 15. You can see from verse 1 to 5 that Samuel came to deliver a message from God to Saul. I hope that you read the whole chapter. So Samuel said, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. That says the Lord of hosts. I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel. How he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. And in verse 3 he said, Now go and attack Amalek and destroy all that they have and do not spare them but kill both men and women infants and nursing child ox and sheep camel and donkey he told him to kill everything in Amalek I've spoken in the past about Amalek and what it means when I was discussing Exodus chapter 17 so this passage is very confusing for many people I've heard many people say what kind of God can command to kill men women infants and animals how can he command to kill anything that breathes in Amalek. You can understand why God said this unless you understand the spiritual meaning behind this. It's all about Amalek. The Amalekites were the inhabitants of Amalek and they were a picture of the flesh. I've already explained this in the past when I talked about Exodus 17 and I want to repeat everything I say. But I want you to know that Amalek is a picture of the flesh. So from a spiritual perspective, this passage means that the children of God are are called to crucify the flesh. We need to kill the flesh. We need to kill our carnal nature. Unless you understand this, you can't understand why God said that they must kill all the Amalekites. In the Old Testament, the Amalekites were very bad people who strongly opposed the children of God and they were a picture of the carnal nature which is against the desires of the spirit. Remember that Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 17 says that the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit are contrary to one another so that you don't do the things that you wish. And Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 says that those who belong to Christ, those who are saved, they have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The people and the animals of Amalek were a picture of the desires of the flesh. That's why they all had to die. God willing, I will continue to explain this topic tomorrow. If you haven't read this chapter yet, please read it. I wish you all a great day. May I am bless you. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.